day and age, you never know what success looks like. You know what I mean? <laughs> there we go. All right, everybody. Look, we're I'm here. I'm going to assume that you're a, you're a busy, active gentleman, okay? I'm busy. I don't, you got I'm, shit to do, and you ain't got time for my bullshit, okay? I'm busy. I don't know if I'm active, but hey, everybody. <laughs> this is uh, Dan with the Godfo Universe, and we're here. Uh, Chris, how do you want to be introduced? Like, Chris's Vengeance? Can I call you Mr. Vengeance? Uh, you can just call me Chris. It's fine. Chris Hicks right. is my name, but yeah. Can you give a vengeance? Uh, yep. Depends on who you ask. I'm Chris or I'm vengeance, depending on who you are. <laughs> that's a great, <laughs> that's a wonderful answer. Um, yeah. Uh, you want to give like a quick introduction to yourself and then we jump, jump right into this. Yeah. Uh, quick. Uh, I'm a, I'm a filmmaker, comic book nerd. Um, uh, been in the business shit 25 years almost, the entertainment business. Yeah. Um, working on a few projects, uh, for comic books and film. I have a small production company, Vengeance Productions, where I help other creators um, make their dreams come true with their projects, with like promotional material, um, uh, support, um, whether it's like on the production side or just handling um, getting things out there for them. Um, without breaking the bank. So that's basically what I've been doing for the past couple of years. Yeah, and that's what impressed me is when we talked the first time, um, was that kind of like us, you get your hands into like a lot of different bets. It's like a lot of dudes just do like one thing and then they don't even do it well. <laughs> and like, yeah. Uh -huh. um, and going, going with it, like I, I just want to dive right in because I'm, I'm so excited to talk with you about this. Um, first of all, I, I want you on here because I want to like uh, throw a defense for what you uh, what happened to you the other day because we don't we kind of made it like a company policy we don't like involve in like Twitter and stuff but we do involve ourselves with like video stuff so because we prefer this format and I don't feel like getting my phone blown up on Twitter you know what I mean but yeah smart you, that's a smart idea you I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna that one okay yeah, if you don't yeah, mind I probably yeah. might I might have to implement that program well it's it just makes everything easier but. You got dogpiled on Twitter because some, I forget who it was. I don't care who it was. Um, you, I'll, I'll let you say the names. I don't know who they are. I don't know these people, but. I, I don't, I don't really yeah. know who they are either. Like that doesn't, yeah. like, you know what I mean? I don't even care. Well, you know, I usually try to, I guess you just ignore this kind of stuff, but this was really important and it struck me. It was, they, basically somebody was like, you know, what, like everybody, what bothers you about comics nowadays? And you politely said indie or mainstream. And they said indie. And you said, well, to, and quote me if I, if I mess you up, I don't, or don't quote me saying that, correct me if I mess you up. Um, you basically said, like, in, in a general sense, there's a lack of creativity. I, mm -hmm. And that's just absolutely true. <laughs> like, I don't... Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you want to give, like, um, your perspective of that real quick? Uh... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I got, I got dogpiled. Um, that's just like the first one you saw. I got a little bit dogpiled <laughs> after that too. Um, for um, I got dogpiled by Comicsgate. Then I got dogpiled by the anti Comicsgate for being Comicsgate. I'm like, dude, are oh, you God. reading? Are we on? Like, how old are you? Are you 12? <laughs> but um, I'm like, <clears throat> okay, so okay, right, rewind the clocks back. COVID, real quick. It happened right in the middle of me being in film production. I'm like, fuck, I can't do anything. Yeah. I'm like, I love comics. I want to start making comics. So I get myself involved in indie comics, trying to make this little tiny project um, take take flight. So I get to know Comics Gate. I get to know the indie comic book creators. I get to know the artists. I get to know some of the writers and the creators. I get to know a thing called Comics Gate that I never fucking heard of. <laughs> and then, I, and then for the for a, for a long time, Comics Gate is, 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 to this day is like depending on who you ask is completely different to the next person. So there's really mm -hmm. no cohesive when it comes to that structure. Yeah, it's it's, Schro it's Schrodinger's it's Schrodinger's comics gate. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so like I I took it upon myself because if I was gonna, you know, I want to say okay, yeah. I'm gonna make a comic book because that's all I can do. I love comics. I want to get with comic book people. So I do the things that they do. I go into these groups. I learn and I observe, and I observe and I learn, and then I start giving opinions and I observe and I learn. <laughs> that's the one and... that'll get you in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, so over time, I have just been amazed by the level of um, the level of support 
and effort people are giving to some mediocrity shit. shit that's not like horrible, <laughs> but it's no, it's getting like eighty, hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Like, holy macaroni! I can make four movies with that shit, mm-hmm. and it's some. It's about a little tiny person who travels from this to there, and it's got these things in it. And that's when I learned that, like, oh, shit, there's a big problem. Like, nobody cares about story, A. It's all about art, B. And then after that, it's it's not even – okay, no, I'm sorry. It's all about the creator, A, mm-hmm. the art, B, the story, C. I agree and 100% I'm a, I'm a with that. I'm a filmmaker. Yeah. I'm a filmmaker, and I'm like, that's opposite, bro. You're going backwards, dude. Mm-hmm. You can't do that. Like, that's not how you make a movie. Yeah, cold of personality Story's is weird. King. It's in its in a it, medium. It, yeah, yeah. Story should be king, and I'm I'm fighting back. And these people are telling me these things are good when I'm like, they're they're not good. I, I <laughs> it's like a, this is written on a fourth grade reading level. Yeah, like no, like who the fuck cares about a cyber cybernetic frog? Like, why does everybody have a universe? Why does everybody have a superhero? <laughs> What what the fuck is going on here, guys? Like, like where are these? Sorry. No, keep get, going, man. Keep going. It's great. Man. I get fucking passionate because I love this shit. Yeah. I love creating. I love stories. I love the emotions that they bring out of you. I love being creative. I love all that stuff. I get a natural high off all of this. Yeah. And I'm I get a little animated. I'm not like super pissed, but like I'm you know devastated, disappointed as a creative. With the mediocrity mm-hmm. that I'm seeing, and the lack of creativity, and a, and a lack of going your own path and playing it safe, but also um, just oh my god, I don't know, this sucks, man, and I don't want to shit on everybody, but like just because you're a fan of comic books your whole life does not make you make you qualified to produce one, write one, and make one that's good. <laughs> I watched movies my entire life. Why did I have to go to film school? Why did I have to learn how to write scripts? Why did I have to learn cinematography? Why did I have to learn all that shit? I watched movies my whole entire life. It's because you don't know shit about shit. You think you do because you're emotionally driven in it. And it's like these people are just making these comments. Well, how does it fan? Like these guys are getting more support. The guy throughout, I was just a fan of comics my whole entire life. I just wanted to make my own universe. You know, it's my own superheroes. And people are like, oh, give me your money. Oh, get, oh, here's my money. Take, oh, God, oh. take my money. <laughs> right. Oh, on my face. Um, and I'm over here trying to write a meaningful, powerful story that hits on multiple levels. It hits on all kinds of tones. It's different. It's special. It's unique. It's, it's bold. It's daring. And I still got the cool art and shit that they got. But it's, they're like, fuck you. Like, it's, it's, it's. It's the waters are muddied. I apologize. There's the end of my rant, but the waters are muddy, and I'm bringing. I'm not hate. I'm not hating on it. I'm bringing shit to the forefront, and I'm never gonna back down because I a if it, if it hits the fan, I have receipts. B, dude, too many people have told me things they probably shouldn't have told me in confidence. <laughs> so if the things hit the fan, like yeah. Here's another part of it. I'm frustrated because there's hypocrites. They're out there right now. And um, they know that they're hypocrites and they know that they're playing the game. And if you call it out, Mm -hmm. you're revealing themselves and they can't have that. They don't want to look in the mirror. They don't want to see that. No, uh, let me let me let me let me put this in real quick. Like, that's why uh, Josh and I really liked uh, you and Elon. And was the idea is like we got I got on there. And of course, Josh, our artist, saw that he's interacted with you guys, at least Elon briefly um, through DMs. And we just like straight shooters. Like, I mean, look, I think. I, what I don't understand, what gets me, like going to add to your rant, and this is, I come from a music background, and in the music world, everyone is fake friends, and it's it's all about the like scenes, and you want to play shows together, so you have to pretend, you have to stay there till like two in the morning while every band plays and pretend you like it. Well, it's like I want to play my show and go home, like, <laughs> like yeah. And if I, no, it's the same yeah. way in the entertainment and in, in, in entertainment business. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you're right. It is a lot of that. Um, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. I pretend to like you because I like where that could get me. They mm-hmm. pretend to like you because they like where that could get them. The people, and the people you, that the people that you gain nothing from um, being friends with to other people, like the people that hate you because you're friends with those people, those are the people you should be friends with. They're the ones that get you nothing, get you no clout. You know, if and, yeah, yeah. 
you're right. And that leads to the other half of indie comics right now where it's um, they're playing high school games. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. <sighs> Bro, I'm so fucking frustrated that, you know, we're all adults and we're all creative adults. Why are we acting like children? And that's another that's another big piece of it. It's not about the art. It's yeah. not about the art. It's not about challenging yourself. It's not about growing as an artist or helping each other. If they they're in competition, which I don't understand, I'm in friendly competition with everybody. Yeah. You know who I'm in most competition with? Myself. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the I want to be better. We like seeing it from a competitive side in quality. Like oh, like what you know we we were yeah, making. Yeah, that's the only measure. Yeah. Of, that's the only yeah. measure measure of competitiveness, well, right? Am well, I like right? our yeah, our artist Josh. Yeah. We saw that people were praising iconic comics and the, their artist Tim because he's getting like pages a day. And Josh is like, okay, I can do that because he was getting out like maybe one page a day. It's like maybe I can get two pages a day. Maybe I can get three pages a day because if someone can do it and set a standard, I can surpass that standard. But the 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 petty stuff, like I, mean, the, I don't know, I was just so amazed. Like, why, like Chris, people are really piling this guy and assuming like because you, you said a general problem is like a creativity, which is every everything every field is that way especially right now. Yeah. And the people be like, well, not everything. It's like, he didn't say everything. He wasn't shitting on it. Like he, he was saying there's a general problem. Like if you said okay. Amer- America is generally obese, you're right. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and they want to find those little cracks in those, those little hairs they want to split. Like one guy said, like, I, when I said comics, I said, you know, comics get fucked up because right now on comics get this whole fucking trademarking and shit. I don't know anything about that, but if you want to enlighten us, feel free. I don't, you know, I, I, I hear those two sides of the story. Mm-hmm. The other side, you know, I'm trying to, I don't know which one to believe. Uh, two people are fighting over the trademark. Um, Ethan's got it. Ethan's saying that if anybody wants to use the trademark, just let him know. But here's the thing. Everyone's always been telling me, oh, Ethan's not in charge of comics gate. Oh, Ethan's not the hierarchy. <laughs> There's no hierarchy in Comics Gate. When there fucking is, and everybody knows it. Yeah. See, it, I, it's I, things like that. So I, yeah. I, I brought it out, and, they, and the guys, I said, you know, Comics Gate, you fucked up right now. Like <clears throat> anybody looking in the Comics Gate, some of the outsiders who they warned me of mm-hmm. were absolutely true. We're right with what you were doing with it. Yeah. And I, and the guy says, okay, you think Comics Gate's a joke? Okay. Other than Ethan aside, are you going to elaborate? Or are you just going <laughs> to be vague? I'm like, are you like, I, I, I wanted to tell him, I'm like, I'm imagining you talking to me with your hand out, with your limp wrist, <laughs> with your head popped to the side. A 90s gay guy. Um, right. Like a, a, will and, not, a will and grace. I'm, I'm saying feminine. <laughs> I'm just saying feminine. I'm not saying gay. A feminine little, like, I got you, brother. Like, checkmate, motherfucker. <laughs> it like, does, the, does the check. <laughs> if I bark back against creativity. Or the fact that I know in my heart that Ethan, Ethan Van Striver is an absolute douchebag tool who manipulates to get what he wants. Okay, I'm not shitting on his hustle, but I've been around people like Ethan. I've watched him on stream. I've watched him treat people the way he has. And to say that he hasn't, that, to say that looking on the outside, looking in at these top guys, mailing all those guys, and looking like if you're a fresh eyed person just looking through a fishbowl lens. Mm-hmm. And you see this person, you're going to go, God, that guy's a fucking dick. And you know what? They're going to defend that you're an asshole for having that assumption. But you know what? Intuition is always there, bro. I get like you, you have to take that with a grain of salt. Like if somebody came outside and said, and people have done this to go, Chris, man, you're fucking rude. <laughs> and you're mean. You say a bunch of shit that you shouldn't be saying. I'm like, you know what? You're absolutely correct. I'm not going to change who I am, but maybe I won't be so mean. Like, could you imagine, like, if I had a follower, if he said that to me publicly, and one of my like followers or friends of him, like, and and gave him that ice, the the same kind of bullshit that these guys do to defend Ethan, I'm like, and then I turn around and I go, okay, well, if if he's a douchebag and you got people defending you, you have to assume those people are douchebags as well. <laughs> so like, you're surrounded. We turn around, all of a sudden, it's like a zombie horror film. And someone turns the lights on, and you're surrounded by fucking zombies. But they're simps. I um, and they're in thousands of them, and they're mind controlled. And it's, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I just I you know, here, here's my take on that. I don't know anything I'm, about um yeah. 
I don't know anything about really about comics, Kate, because I I've, I researched it when we got into making comics, and I was like, this sounds boring. You know, <laughs> I don't I don't care. Um, it actually pretty it is. That's yeah. why they fight with each other constantly. And well, simp and well, yeah. Let me let me let me finish this thought if you don't mind, because I want to go back to what you were saying. Um, I don't think because a lot of people are like I think people because I know who Ethan Van Scriver was because I read Green his Green Lantern run. Um, and I knew he's a good artist, but I think people buy like the comic skate kind of stuff because they know these names they know these guys and they like their art i don't think the drama stuff sells their books and i think people think it does you know what i mean like i think that they think it's youtube that's selling the stuff but i think it's their name so what i all have to say i think the people who want to emulate comic skate and they don't have a name they're just going to be in for a rude awakening because when you stir like the shit pot and you do what these people do without their name it doesn't work so no, you're exactly you're exactly yeah. correct. Yeah, you're, you're, they don't have the clout to throw around. They don't have the mixture. You can't mm-hmm. do that. Like I can't go in the comics gate and be like, I'm better than Ethan Van Scriver. <laughs> look at me. Look at my comic. Because I'm gonna get devastated. And and you, but you know, it's like he has that weight to throw around. Sorry. No, that that, that voice was uh um, was like borderline uh like Tarantino esque. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say that. I'll just say that. I don't know what the fuck the voice was. They, they, they I'm, Ethan Vance Grabber. I'm Ethan Van Scriver. Motherfucker. <laughs> Motherfucker. N word, every other word, N word. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Ed, but that's Terrence. You, know. you were saying yeah. Edward Cullen. That's what you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> Edward Norton. <laughs> Edward Norton, right. Yeah. I, I used to get called uh, Ed Norton Jr. Um, by my friends when I was younger, I kind of looked like, you know, the younger, thinner um, I feel, I feel, guy. But, um, I feel like Ed Norton is still Edward Norton Jr. <laughs> is he a junior? Oh, he is? I don't know. Just like, this, it, I'm just saying he always, he still like looks young and he's like this small guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he is. Yeah, he's forever young. Yeah. Um, but no, what do you, what do you think? Uh, uh, like, is is I, do you think it's just people being touchy? Do you think it's an intentional click thing? I mean, I, I'm trying to figure it out because, like, when you say because because p- people were like, you know, they were calling you stupid basically for saying like insulting indie comics while you make indie comics. It's like, dude, when you go into anything, you want to improve it. Like, if you don't think there's a problem in your field, you're probably blind. You, you see you're what I'm blind, saying? You're blind. You're sheep. You're not doing it for the right reasons. I question your integrity. And I question <laughs> the integrity of anybody. I'm not saying the way. And your horse you rode in on. <laughs> Right, and your horse. Um, <laughs> but I, I want. I mean, I just, I. It's like challenging people to like. I can see those ways of floating in the mediocrity. I can mm-hmm. see those valleys of going into the things being easy. I can see the easy way of it. But um, I'm still that that little kid inside of me is still telling people, hey. Remember that you want to make people feel like you felt when you're a little kid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In 1990, watching Jurassic Park for the first time in this uh, in this huge theater, you know what I mean. Yeah. And you in the, you just feel those emotions, and that's what you want to do. You want to tell cool fucking stories. If you want to make money, go into and, IT. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, we should be trying to get better at it every single day. And anything else is a distraction. And I I also walk the walk. I'm lucky to have a wife that sticks by me, but. Dude, all my cards or my chips are on the table. Everything I do is into it. I've learned things I I had to learn that I never thought I could learn. I've done th- I live the life. I don't have a social life. I don't have a physical friend within 4 hours of <laughs> I'm dedicated to getting better at my job and working on something every single day. And I believe that I've done great and I have done great things. Mm-hmm because of that and i encourage in 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 my way that's the barometer of how bad do you want it are you going to sacrifice Mm -hmm. and then if you're not willing to sacrifice then you know you you don't have integrity well you just spoke about um you know your your work barometer but i'd really like to hear about your work barack obama my my work (laughs) barack obama (laughs) meaning I don't know. It just sounded funny. I was like, I was like, I want to see if, what Chris will do with this because you, you, you think really quickly and speak really quickly, which means I can tell you're not from the south. Uh, 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 the people, the country needs to come together. 
Uh, I don't do a very good Barack Obama, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I can't that, do no, that, that, it, but, that, that, that hit right there, Obama, like, that, I, that was great. See, I just, uh, 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 I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm not from the South. No, I'm originally from California, living in Kentucky, but um, like, it's just, I think it's like people like you, and that's kind of one of the reasons we have the show. It's also yeah. like, okay, you know, I'm giving people opportunities to not just read my tweets, but come on my show listen to me talk um and they in in they hear my passion yeah and i know my passion doesn't come through because it's it's veiled with frustrations of my own life trying to make it and i want it i i crave to be around creative people mm-hmm. and it's like finding people like you or joseph or josh or elon is like i had to scrape through like so much regular mm-hmm. you know to get down and find you guys and i'm like i can't believe that all these tools to make us better are also tools of making us d- divisive and that you know if you want to make it in comics gate you 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 can't just get off on talent it doesn't exist or i would be a king <laughs> sorry but I'm no, just saying. no i would love I would to hear be better more. than where i'm at i would love to they hear don't, on they're a, not accepting. well no on, on yeah. another on another episode here um I've, I've got to go in just a few minutes um i would love to hear your your experience in california in the entertainment business and um because, I mean, those stories are fascinating anytime anyone has them because that that's a hell pit, man. In the brief, brief moment that I've stepped into that with music, man, it's 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 not a good place. It's not a good place to be. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's yeah, I, I would love to talk more about it um, because yeah. I was I was blinded at first. But the veil was the veil when the veil was kind of thrown over my eyes and like. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't know how to explain that moment, but I realized um everything I thought was compl- uh, I didn't. Long story short, brother, I I didn't like the person that I would have to be- become to be successful, and I I panicked, I freaked out. I I I was going in like I really was that that kid who was just like, hey, let's go make movies. Mm-hmm. We're making fucking movies. You make movies, I make movies. Let's make movies too. And I get there, and it's cutthroat. They're gonna fucking. It's so bad. It's like, oh no, like, you know, what could go wrong? And oh no, it all went wrong. Yeah, it fucking did. And it, um, and I'm not, um, I'm not laughing at you. Yeah. That's just a funny. Discussion. No, no, no. <laughs> it. I really went in naive as hell. Um, it came out like, look, I'm behind the camera. I just want to make movies. I just want to tell stories. Yeah. Do you all get in front of the camera? Face. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm not having a thousand people pick at me. And I walked into an audition one time and I got through the door. They're like, no, and I just <laughs> walked right back out. Like literally, I mean, that sounds so fucking stupid, but that I've been told you're too young. You're too old. You're too, sh- you're, you're this, you're that. I mean, they pick at you, they prod at you. And then when you get a role, mm-hmm. every, all, all the, the, that's the best part. Everyone starts to turn around and treat you a bit different. And it's like, it, it makes you feel slimy. It makes you go, oh, it's like it's like it's like when like a viper turns around and it's like whoosh, now it's like yeah. slithering towards you because it senses something from you that you didn't have yesterday, and you're the same mm-hmm. fucking dude. You just booked a fucking gig, mm-hmm. and now everyone's like, oh, you want to come to my house and hang out with my other actor friends? I'm like, huh? What the fuck is going on here? Yeah. Well, it's because you got a little notch on your belt, and then and then there's there's the fucking clubs. Anyway, I'll, no, no, no. Uh, like, I'll come back. Yeah, yeah you that should. Like that—that that reminds me of a uh, that that book that Dave Chappelle quoted. Like it was about the like the pimp that he, he beats his his whores over and over and over, and then he gives them like a hot bath and a meal, and that's the whole thing. Is they beat you down, reject you, reject, reject you, then they give you a tiny crumb, and you stay forever. You know. Yep. Yeah. It's um, it's the sleaziest sales tactics at its its finest, and it's worse if you're a woman. Mm-hmm. At least back then it was. Um, the thing. <laughs> Look, dude, the things like you see these girls out there. I'm, I don't care. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't care. No, she didn't have to do that. I'm like, I'm going to tell you right now. She had to do some very uncomfortable things. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what separates you from everybody else. They all did. Mm-hmm. They all signed their soul away and made that moment. Well, let's see. Well, can we just, can we put Scarlett in a bikini? I just, <laughs> maybe there's a scene in the film where I'm going to have him by the pool. I just really want to see her in something like that, you know, or, mm-hmm. or the artist. Like, here's one thing. There's no reason to have a sex scene in a film unless your director's a pervert. Yeah. 
There's no reason. You can show two people in love with each other tastefully without sex scenes. Why why do women sign up for this? Like that mm-hmm. that is just pure eye perverdity. And it's you're you're selling your soul. You're kind of losing a bit of yourself for just people looking at you. It's like Never did I once see a movie and I was like, oh, my God, the lovemaking scene. Oh, my God. Did you see that? Like, you just put the whole movie together because they were in, in sex. <laughs> they were no. in sex. <laughs> they were in sex mode. Did you see that part? They went goblin mode. No, it's like it's it, it, it's just I, I feel like I've been in I've been in those situations. You, I have casting calls with females and like I am like, dude. <laughs> Like if as many females, like my casting assistant is female. I have a female producer. Like I'm like, I'm not that guy. There's no, you, you don't need to take your clothes off in my horror film. Well, oh, this will make the horror film good. I'm like, dude, I don't need to do, I can tell you an awesome story. You won't even know this. Nobody didn't have their booby out. Yeah. Green, like that's not my story. Green room. Yeah, but green I mean, room did that really well. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I've, exactly. I've got to run, man. I'm sorry. I really enjoyed this talk with you. Um, Let's do it again. Too, I would love. There's so much I'd like to talk to you about, but um, I'm gonna release this as one of our podcasts. The only editing I'll do is block out where I changed a screen so people don't see my desktop background. Um, if you want, I can send you a copy of it before I release because I like to be unbelievably transparent with people. Um, but yeah, man, let's do this again. I, yeah, I, 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 I love I, talking I, with you. Oh man, that'd be great. I appreciate your time. Sorry once again, guys. I was late. You know, <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm good. here, man. Yep. I'm here whenever you want to do another thing. Have you back on the show. That'd be great. Yep. Take it easy, Chris. Thanks, man. You too, buddy. Thank you, man. Peace.